pleasure to ask the, um, the Secretary General of the WCO, who has been the um, convener of the Seventh Global Congress, to come forward. Uh, and I'd also like at the same time if I could invite uh, the, the people that have, have put this event together, thanks very much, um, who put this event together to also come forward. If I could invite uh, Louise Van Gruen from, from WIPO, um, Roberto Martinez from Interpol, Shelley Duggan from ICC Bass Camp, and, and to, Ms. Tusi Long from in, uh, Inter, please, to come forward and, and take a seat, and we'll move to the closing session. Let's, let's get rid of these. Please, just, just, just take a seat anywhere, I think, would be. And the Secretary General is ready. Good. All right. This tip in front of him. Yeah. Okay. All right, it's now my pleasure to uh, hand the floor to um, Secretary General Mikaria from the World Customs Organization to make his closing comments. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, moderator, and uh, um, very good afternoon to all of you. And uh, as the chair of uh, this seventh uh, uh, Global Congress on combating uh, um, counterfeiting and piracy, it gives me a great uh, pleasure and honor to formally close this seventh Congress. During the course of the past three days, uh, there has been one word which has been reiterated uh, quite often, and this is collaboration. And uh, this Congress is a very good example of uh, this collaboration. Well, um, under this spirit of collaboration, the past three days have given us an opportunity to truly understand the economic and social effects of counterfeiting and piracy, as well as, uh, and more importantly, uh, we have explored the potential remedies and the best practices which can serve all of us to go forward. So uh, what have we learned um, over the past three days? Uh, have we observed common threats uh, through those uh, panel discussions? One rec recurrent theme um, should be a sense of expectation. S sense of ex expectation on all uh, stakeholders, not only from for law enforcement agencies or public sector, but uh, also uh, from the educators uh, right holders and uh, um, public service providers and uh, even um, the, as the last panel shows um, uh, technology uh, solution providers that uh, um, the combat of uh, this uh, important combat uh, against uh, counterfeiting and piracy will provide us and move us to act to try to stem this tide, uh, that tide. And, uh, of course, this Congress is not and ought not to be just a talking shop, but uh, uh, we must deliver and we must respond to this heightened expectation from all stakeholders. Well, since the last uh, Congress, which was held in 2011, February, in Paris, uh, some progress has been made. Uh, but the underlying challenges still remain. Well, in the first uh, um, session, it was entitled From Paris to Istanbul. And uh, what uh, change has been there uh, in the past two years? And it has become uh, increasingly apparent that any effective solution or remedy has to take place under the guise of a public-private partnership. A trend observed in the interlude between the two Congress has been in that uh, the public opinion on intellectual property rights. There are some positive, but others are negative um, um, uh, shift. So uh, this is the reality. And also another rea reality is that uh, we continue to face these economic difficulties uh, in all areas 
which result in the diminishing human resources available and also the budget available for the fight against counterfeiting and piracy. Those are the realities and challenges for all of us. We are all asked to do more with this. Um, then, uh, during the panel session of building respect for intellectual property, all uh, speakers, uh, stakeholders can agree that uh, um, it is in our know, interest, own interest, to build respect for intellectual property. Um, we need to alter uh, perspective and focus on uh, building respect for intellectual property rather than simply focusing on enforcement issues. Well, um, uh, representing uh, law enforcement agencies, if there is not uh, uh, respect for intellectual property, it is very difficult for us to enforce any regulations uh, related to this uh, protection of IPR. Therefore, what we need is a holistic approach and uh, um, uh, that's encompassing an understanding and respect for the law enforcement remedies, which can stem the tide, but also fostering and cultivating uh, respect for the inherent value of intellectual property. Well, enforcement uh, should not be done in isolation, uh, uh, and it is um, together or um, enforced by the respect of intellectual property is really a must for any enforcement in this area. The following session on supply chain security focused on that nowadays supply chain has become very complicated and sophisticated and it is used by legitimate traders but also exploited by counterfeiters and the role and the responsibility of intermediaries uh, throughout this uh, supply chain has been highlighted. And uh, also we expect that uh, all players in the supply chain conduct due diligence. Uh, this is really a, a, a highlighted uh, area uh, that we need this uh, more transparent and efficient supply chain, but supported by due diligence of those who are involved, including intermediaries. And, and, and during the following panel session, uh, capturing the elusive infringer on the internet. Well, this word elusive uh, connotes to the reality that uh, um, internet uh, use has enabled, uh, well, trade to grow, but uh, um, increasingly the, it has become very much sophisticated and it allowed online piracy, which is a huge problem for all of us. And uh, also uh, in this connection, cooperation with the internet service provider is a must, but also uh, payment providers credit bank, uh, uh, credit cards and banking is also a very important issue to fight um, uh, against this online piracy. And in the following uh, session of evolving nature of counterfeiting, well, uh, speakers uh, uh, and um, you agreed uh, that an appropriate balance between intellectual property protection and public health and safety objectives is uh, uh, essential. Uh, the importance of um, uh, increased capacity building for all stakeholders was highlighted, and uh, um, challenges still remain in terms of number of prosecutions and rather weak justice uh, uh, and legislation. And um, protecting public health and protecting intellectual property, there is a distinction between them, but it was acknowledged that there are large part of overlaps between those two areas. And then um, the, on the second day, awareness and education. 
Consumer awareness is really a key pillar. And uh, well, it was a very dynamic and uh, interesting session. We saw um, uh, animation by, uh, uh, for children or um, well, very nice uh, uh, film clips for um, teenagers. So targeting at the younger generation, um, small children to, um, to um, uh, teenagers, who will shape that consumer uh, culture is very important. And from the very beginning of life, young ages, a sentiment of natural justice, meaning that if you create something, then natural justice would decree that this then belongs to you. It's a necessary um, perception that uh, um, young people or children uh, should learn uh, from the very early uh, stage and uh, how we could use, uh, um, mobilize all those tools, um, uh, animation, uh, video games, uh, or creating superheroes, and um, we have seen many uh, of uh, those examples. And um, in a nutshell, what is important is um, consumers should be empowered, and um, uh, adequate information uh, should be made to inform them that they can make uh, an informed uh, purchasing decisions. And in the following panel, operational enforcement activities in the context of customs, uh, we heard um, a variety of experiences from uh, customer administrations and how they are struggling uh, to fight against counterfeiting and piracy. And, uh, persistent uh, um, challenge remains um, how best they can implement risk-based interventions. Because customer administration's uh, mission is to facilitate legitimate trade, but at the same time identify high-risk uh, cargo that includes counterfeiting and piracy. And that balance uh, should be done uh, through risk-based uh, um, intervention or risk management. And uh, therefore, uh, building technical capacity is very important. And for that purpose, especially in this area, we have to provide adequate tools so that uh, um, customs officers can make informed decisions on their intervention at borders. And um, also, what is important is um, partnership with um, the with right holders in real time to get consultation uh, with them. So, uh, and this should be done in a secure and efficient manner. So this is the challenge, and uh, this is where Customs NWCO is uh, struggling uh, to uh, address. In the following session, uh, determining jurisdiction in cross-border cases. Uh, in this session, judges and lawyers talked about legal impetus and measures in place to combat counterfeiting and piracy. Because, um, well, this is a legal matter, so uh, quite often uh, there is a perception that this is a national issue. But then, um, uh, therefore, it is purely territorial. But on the other hand, the reality shows that uh, um, this phenomenon is transnational. Uh, therefore, uh, you need a transnational uh, solution uh, in the future. And uh, especially uh, the use of internet has blurred this um, territoriality and uh, made it very difficult. Therefore, uh, this uh, balance of uh, this um, jurisdiction matter, which is also about the balance uh, Balancing um, between the cost and efficiency of procedure is very important. Um, judicial system should not be too much high cost in a profit way. Uh, and um, uh, we need also consistency in ruling, because there are many rulings, but uh, we need that uh, to ensure that consistency. And then um, uh, another interesting uh, um, session of the Turkish experiences, we learned how our host countries, uh, how our host country, Turkey, is uh, trying. But uh, um, first of all, they have a very long standing history of protection of intellectual property, which started um, as early as in 1857. And um, uh, 
they are using utility models and alignment uh, with the codes is maintained. And uh, um, as uh, um, Turkey is, uh, it has a very strategic position, and it is a gateway to the big market of the uh, European Union. Uh, there is an EU project uh, for effective IPR, in, IPR protection, which, uh, uh, which includes uh, close cooperation with Turkey, and um, wide-ranging training opportunities are, are available for uh, Turkish jurists. Um, the IPL legal system in Turkey is, um, has become, of course, um, aligned with international norms, and um, the challenge, remaining challenge, is that national IP law is still at the, um, uh, at the national assembly. But uh, um, uh, let's hope that uh, um, uh, Turkey can make progress. And in a practical term, it has already made progress in uh, replacing uh, um, paper to um, uh, electronic submission of documents. So uh, the progress uh, uh, is there. And then um, in a, a session on uh, transnational organized crime in relation to counterfeiting piracy, yes, in some cases uh, there are organized crime behind and um, uh, counterfeiting, uh, counterfeiting and piracy are connected to, to that. Uh, the importance uh, of ensuring that enforcement uh, uh, agents have at their disposal all necessary tools uh, was uh, highlighted and uh, uh, that combat um, uh, should be very um, efficient and effective. Uh, uh, it is not only counterfeiting, but um, in some cases behind the scene there are organized crimes. But uh, the reality, the challenge still remains that borders remain porous and no country is immune uh, to this type of crime. And uh, um, uh, furthermore, uh, there is uh, agreement that uh, the globalized uh, um, uh, at the beginning uh, there was a session on regional and national challenges, updates from developing um, open markets and um, in the key developing uh, or emerging markets, uh, uh, there are many challenges and uh, innovative approaches are taken to counter these challenges. And um, there is notable increase in intellectual property theft in those emerging um, economies. And more seizures are made at borders and uh, the systematic abuse and the misuse of free trade zone are observed, unfortunately, and the infiltration of counterfeited and pirated products into supply chain is a notable um, phenomenon. And the necessity of incentivizing the creation of durable high-level policy coordination amongst the governments between stakeholders was very much underlined. Then, um, the, uh, in the public and private partnership and other self-regulatory mechanism panel, uh, the session covered existing uh, private and public uh, partnership mechanism and uh, um, alternate uh, op uh, opinions uh, that have been recently launched to address counterfeiting and piracy with a view to safeguarding the benefits of intellectual properties. And uh, what was um, underlined was the need for collaborative collaboration and collaborative voluntary cooperation uh, between industry and the public sector. Uh, therefore, dialogue, engagement, trust, cooperation, and um, efficiency, uh, they are very important. And these um, initiatives serve as a complement to all the existing tools, so they are uh, in a complementary nature. And the last session of technology a key driver to address evolving challenges was also an uh, important uh, session to see how technology can help us to give us trust and uh, um, also what kind of innovation is underway and uh, um, uh, also uh, standardized process is already uh, ongoing and uh, there is uh, enabling uh, technology for uh, to, uh, for the business to take an appropriate decision. 
but uh, um, also a reality on the ground in customs, how they are using those technology for, for their purpose. And uh, um, in the end, um, well, we need um, database and um, to uh, leverage on this database um, collaboration is necessary. So those are the um, all the panel sessions, if I um, resume them in a very um, succinct manner. Um, in conclusion, uh, this Global Congress has provided a platform uh, for learning, discussion, and debate. And also, uh, outside this uh, Congress hall, uh, there are many networking activities were going on, and I heard that, uh, well, uh, that kind of networking was very useful in uh, the knowing others' um, best practices, but uh, and incorporating what having already gained. And uh, we hope that this Congress has proved beneficial for all of you, and uh, we sincerely hope that uh, we reconvene for the eighth edition of uh, this um, conference. Uh, uh, the room for improvement that has been identified has been well um, addressed. Lastly, uh, as you will appreciate, um, a conference of this size and magnitude requires a significant uh, um, effort from all stakeholders. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to our Congress partners, Interpol, uh, WIPO, PASCAP, and INTA for all their hard work and contributions over the last 12 months. And uh, um, of course, my special thanks goes to the host, uh, that is Turkish government, um, first uh, represented by um, Prime Minister Erdogan, uh, with his very inspiring speech that uh, set the scene uh, for this Congress and uh, um, a very high level um, political willingness was um, showed. And also uh, my special thanks to Turkish Customs, Mr. Yajiz, and his Deputy Minister and uh, um, Secret under Secretary and uh, um, Deputy Under Secretary, all customs officers have worked very hard to make our conference successful and our stay in this um, charming connectivity town of um, Istanbul very comfortable and enjoyable and uh, um, made uh, ensure the success of this uh, Congress. I thank you very much and I wish you all safe trip home. Thank you.